Hello friends, welcome to my channel. If you are looking for a job as a fresher or experienced guy in Salesforce as an admin or a BA, then by gaining the testing knowledge, you can also apply for testing role. Uh, but make sure that you prepare a separate resume for Salesforce tester. I have prepared testing concept in the form of questions. So I have provided enough knowledge needed to acquire skills and job as a Salesforce tester. In this video, I have not covered Salesforce concept. You can learn Salesforce by doing admin trailheads. So let's go and get started. So why we perform testing? We perform testing to deliver defect free and quality product. Does testing ensure 100% defect free product? No, it is not possible to deliver 100% defect free product. We can minimize the defects up to 95% but to run all permutations and combination in test execution is next to impossible because that increases the number of test cases too exponentially. We follow some tried and tested approach like boundary value conditions, equivalence partitioning, positive and negative uh, testing. These techniques reduces the number of test cases to great extent but that equally effective in finding more defects. Why we need to perform testing any Salesforce application as this is license based product and tested by Salesforce. Yes, the features are tested by Salesforce itself, which company offers Salesforce, Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, Marketing Cloud, etc. However, company do not use the features as is. They need to perform a lot of customizations as per their business model. In order to do that, they build team like any other development project works. So <clears throat> we need to hire implementation uh, team, uh, developers, business users, stakeholders, project management, solution architect, and Salesforce architect. So <clears throat> the uh, development process starts with requirement gathering after their designing, development, testing, and features then features provided to user means uh, we make the product live to the users. Since this process involves lot of development work, testing has to be in place in order to ensure that software is working as per the requirement. How Salesforce testing is different from any other testing? Testing concepts will be same, but to understand requirement properly, one should have intermediate knowledge on how Salesforce CRM platform works. It is better if you have at least Salesforce admin certification or if you have done admin modules completed on Trailhead. <clears throat> so that will reflect your knowledge and that you possess adequate knowledge of Salesforce platform. <clears throat> so not only this will help you in understanding Salesforce platform, but also it will help you to fetch interview calls for, for Salesforce testing roles. So let's understand testing basics. What is testing? It is basically the sequence of steps that you follow in order to test the functionality of an application as per the business requirement or testing the software as per the business requirement. Types of testing. So there are two types of testing, functional testing and non-functional testing. Functional testing. In functional testing, we test the functionality of software as per the business requirement. So basically we ensure that it is working as per the specified, uh, specified requirement. So <clears throat> uh, types of functional testing, smoke testing, sanity testing, functional testing, system testing, integration testing, and to end testing, non-functional testing. In this testing, we observe how application or software behaves under certain conditions. So example, when number of users are more than usual, so you want to basically test the load of the user, how application is behaving. So you perform load testing, how application performs when uh, you are performing bulk operation means you're loading data, uh, millions of records in your application. So, so you want to check how application is behaving. Uh, and we also check the compatibility in different browsers, how the look and feel of the application and uh, whether all the functionality is working properly or not. 
so there are different browsers like safari microsoft edge chrome firefox what is bug so bug is the difference between the expected and actual result uh, so what is expected and actual result is so expected result is basically the result calculated based on the business requirement suppose you have a business requirement uh, for a calculator so that calculates basically two numbers and add one at the end of the result basically if you are adding two plus two uh, uh, so the result should be five as per the business requirement but when you are actually testing uh, the application once it is built by the development team so when you are running your test so you find that uh, the actual result is coming four, not five. So that means it is a bug because you are finding a difference between the expected and the actual result. So you log a bug and give it to the development team. What is the difference among bug, defect and error? Bug, it is reported by tester. Uh, so once it is, uh, you know, reported uh, to development team, so developer, Team, development team might say that it is working as per the specification or as per the design so once it is confirmed by the implementation team then we consider that bug as a defect means actual issue so defect is nothing but a real issue error problems that are encountered in code so <clears throat> so in salesforce you might come across when you're running your code too many soql queries too many dml operations so that is code related problems what is sdlc sdlc stands for software development life cycle in sdlc we perform certain activities in order to develop desired software or application it starts with requirement gathering design coding testing then we push the functionality to user to uh, production so <clears throat> sdlc examples are waterfall model v model and agile development model what is stlc stlc stands for software testing life cycle in stlc we perform certain activities in order to conduct effective testing it starts with requirement analysis basically you understand the requirement notify business analyst if there are any gaps in the requirement Identify test scenario, create test cases, execute test cases, bug report, bug reporting, perform retesting for uh, fixed defects. What is test plan? This is a high level document that we prepare in order to conduct testing. So basically we plan activities and define deliverables before start of testing. Test plan contains following items. So it includes introduction, introduction about the project total items that are going to be part of the release. So basically we list down all the features and uh, <clears throat> we include in scope. So items that needs to be tested and uh, we also list out the items which are out of scope for testing. We mentioned rules and responsibilities um, who are involved, uh, you know, involved in the project, you know, the resources will be working on the project and define priority and severity level to log a defect risk and contingency plan and we define test strategy uh, in test strategy we um, we include how many number of test cases we have identified for the requirements and we uh, we uh, do the effort estimation and phases of the testing plan for uh, you know uh, for this testing the release testing uh, like what we are doing in the first phase second phase and third phase so in first phase you basically test new functionality so you allocate some time for those testing for that testing like two to three days second phase is regression test cases and retesting of defects so you allocate some days for that based on the project two to three days uh, third phase is UAT testing, end to end testing, load testing, and volume testing. So, depending on the requirement and the project. So, uh, you allocate some time for those kind of testing. So, uh, three, four days, or it could be more. So, and also you define entry criteria and exit criteria for the, uh, for, to perform testing. What is test strategy? 
this is a high level document made by the organization so that they can implement baseline strategy for their projects so difference between test plan and test strategy so uh, test strategy uh, is basically part of test plan document we include test strategy in test plan uh, so we take the basic structure or guideline that we have defined in the test strategy and modified some areas as per the project what is test case test case is a document that includes step by step instructions to validate the piece of functionality so <clears throat> basically when you are writing your test case the column should be test case id test scenario uh, prerequisites test steps expected result and actual result so uh, let's understand uh, the basic example of test case so the scenario uh, uh, we are writing for the positive scenario for login functionality for any login functionality for any application so uh, what should be the prerequisites user should be registered and you should have username valid username and password uh, for that user and you should have active url as well and so here are the test steps you open browser either google chrome safari or firefox as per your business requirement enter url and hit the enter button user should land up onto the login page then you enter valid username and password and hit the login button so then you will write expected result user should land up onto the home page and logged in user should show up on on the top right as per your business requirement so here is the you know the common format that you uh, you will implement while you will writing your test case so another example for salesforce functionality so there is a user story as a salesforce user i want to send out communication via email on closing the deal which is over 50k to my manager so that manager should be aware of my high closing deals so developer team has built the functionality it is available for testing so uh, so normally you will start with the test case id here is the test case id i have given test scenario application should trigger email alert to res reporting manager when opportunity status equal to close one and amount is greater than 50k prerequisite you should be able to log in as a sales user and able to close opportunity having amount greater than 50k so test steps login as a salesforce user sorry login as a sales user click on opportunity tab look for open opportunity which is not open or closed change the status of opportunity to close one and make the amount more than 50k check the email alert generated for your manager template should contain opportunity name and amount make sure that it is as per the requirement expected result is email alert should generate for your reporting manager if the status change to close one and the amount is more than 50k so uh, then in the actual result you will uh, you know you will write the finding uh, which you have find during running your test case what is traceability matrix in testing in traceability matrix you basically trace the requirement uh, with the test cases to make sure that we have covered particular requirement with the, all the possible test cases also it gives easy reference what test cases have been written for each requirement so <clears throat> here are the forms of requirement that uh, you will develop as per your uh, development model so in agile development model you usually capture the requirement in the form of user stories in other v model or other uh, other model as well you capture requirement in the form of use cases business requirement document then wireframes and feedback and error messages so let's understand agile scrum model so normally uh, in most of the project nowadays uh, um, agile methodology uh, they use and agile scrum is one of the methodology in agile development model so scrum is one of the methodology in agile development model agile means rapid or fast so this model is similar to iterative and incremental approach 
so there is not much space available for documentation in agile model requirements are captured in the form of user stories scrum is the short time box period uh, usually from 2 to 4 weeks in scrum we perform following activities like requirement gathering future scrum so not for the uh, current sprint cycle for the future sprint cycle uh, um, we uh, you know do the requirement gathering and we do development testing deployment to production so each time box period is considered as sprint so we call as sprint cycle what is user story user story is a simple description of a feature told from the user perspective user story has three component who what why who represents user what represent functionality and why represent purpose of the functionality so defect logging process normally we use uh, tools to log a defect but if no tools are available we log them manually we log a defect when we see difference between expected and actual result as i told you while executing test cases it contains following information title descriptions steps to recreate the defect see we also specify severity and priority of the defect and screenshot and refer the uh, we also refer the requirement document uh, from where we are uh, you know written the test case tool use for defect logging so these are the most popular tools which company uses bugzilla zira and mantis for defect logging things to do after logging defect once you log a defect it get assigned to the development team if developer understood the problem then developer will work on the defect and resolve the issue once the defect is fixed an automatic notification will be sent to the tester then tester will retest the defect to ensure that problem is fixed if fixed then tester will close the defect if not then tester will reopen the defect by adding screenshot of the problem and it will get reassigned to the development team so <clears throat> so this is the last slide i have tried to give in you some basics of salesforce but you can gain knowledge uh, by doing uh, admin trail hacks so <clears throat> this uh, so i have tried to explain you some of the basic concept of salesforce salesforce is a cloud based crm platform it is license based product that provide flexibility for the organization to buy licenses as per their requirement so they can buy licenses as per their users so salesforce is highly customizable and can build specific application as per the business need to start in salesforce one should have access in salesforce org to provide baseline level access so basically that uh, defines what duties will a user perform in the org determined by profile so we assign profile so here are the standard profile system admin view all read only sales user solution manager so <clears throat> so we cannot edit this profile but uh, we can use this profile uh, as a baseline and we can add some additional things based on our requirement and we can create new profile profile determine what app will be available in the app picker what object user can access and what permission user will have on each object and also system permission settings that work through the when you log into salesforce uh, check with app you are seeing also you can switch between the apps from the app picker Uh, you are seeing tabs like home accounts contacts opportunity links etc these tabs are called objects in salesforce these objects are basically tables that store specific information so for example account stores company's information that is related to the company right so when you open the tab you see list of existing records and you can create view edit and delete record based on your profile permission when you open an exist existing record or try to create a new record you see fields uh, those are nothing but the columns of the table so here i am going to end my video please let me know if you want to ask more about the concepts that i have discussed in this video and i'll be happy to answer your questions so let me know and uh, thanks for watching my video